Hello everyone, this is Brian from CAMS. Today I'm going to do a quick demonstration on taking a part that is programmed in part mode and importing that programming data into assembly mode. It's been a very common question for us if that if you've programmed a part in part mode of SOLIDWORKS CAM and or CAMWORKS, can you import that programming data into assembly mode so that we don't have to reprogram it? So since we're going to take the part that's already programmed and into assembly mode, can that be done? Of course it can. So yes. SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS both have the functionality to bring in part mode programming data into assembly mode, saving lots of programming time. This is a great way to reduce, a great way to set up production of multiple instances of the same part or even multiple parts. Additionally, one can include jigs and fixtures in the assembly, making it easier to check for collisions. And then a quick how-to to do this. You're going to create an assembly. Insert the part files that are programmed into that assembly. Reference a fixture coordinate system in the machine setup. Include the SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAMWORKS feature tree or inside the SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAMWORKS feature tree. Right-click on the parts manager and select manage parts. Select the parts in the assembly and then click OK. And then inside SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAMWORKS feature tree, right click on the parts on the one wants to import the CAM data for and then click import data. You can see a little picture here. And I'm going to do this here very shortly live for you. And then just follow the prompts. One quick tip on this is the active CAM configuration in which the part file is saved in will be the CAM data that's inserted into the assembly. SOLIDWORKS CAM users need the professional bundle because that's the bundle that supports um, assembly mode programming. And this is also for mill part programming currently. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to SOLIDWORKS. And we're going to discuss this and illustrate it here for you. I'm going to go ahead and open up just a part here to show you that is programmed in part mode. So this is my part, it's kind of side one. It could be different parts altogether. But I have this program, which is on this setup, is going to just simply do a face feature and a perimeter feature around there, and I'm calling the tools. And a rough mill to mill around the perimeter and a contour mill operation to finish it. Okay, so that's going to be kind of set up one, part one. And then also kind of here in part mode to kind of illustrate this, I have, this is going to be side two in my assembly, or in the second vice. I have this programmed in part mode. So you can see I have all the different features programmed, and I have the tool path and all the features here. So this is the part side two. Okay. I have gone ahead and created the assembly with that part, side one, and side two in here, or they could be completely different parts, part one and part number two, it doesn't matter. Okay. And those are the parts that have the part, the, the cam data that's programmed in part mode in it. So I've got those all set up here in SOLIDWORKS here with the different parts, and I have models of the stock in here and all my fixtures so that we can see these when we program, which is one of the benefits of assembly mode programming. So I'm going to come over here to CAMWORKS, and this process will be the same in SOLIDWORKS CAM. It has to be the professional bundle as well, though. Okay, we're going to go ahead and define our machine. Use a three-axis mill. We're going to pick our post processor. We're going to go to the Setup tab and make sure we reference the fixture coordinate system. Okay. 
and then I want to output them uh, multiple parts by part mode or by part so that I machine one part complete and then the next part. So I've looked at that option down here for part. Then I'm going to simply go into the parts managers we discussed in my quick uh, line view I did. I'm going to go ahead and pick the part one and part two. So there's two different parts there that we want to machine. So we just identified in this assembly the parts that we want to machine. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and define the stock for these guys. Okay, for the first one, I'm going to go ahead and use an assembly in here, or a part that's in my assembly for it, and that's going to be that stock file in my assembly. I'm going to do the same thing for the second instance here. And we're going to go ahead and click that one. So that's defining my stock shape. Okay, now to import the data, we could go ahead and, you know, reprogram the part, but that takes too long. So we want to go ahead and import that data for that part that's already programmed. So to do that, I'm going to simply right click on this part, file in the parts manager and say import data. Notice I am in the CamWorks feature tree. Import data. I'm going to select merge with existing data. And hit OK. And you will see that brought in the CAM features for the phase feature and the part perimeter for this part. I'm going to come down here and repeat that process for the next part. Import part data. Merge with existing data. So it's going to add it to this existing setup here. Because the setup directions are all the same on this. It's a 3-axis part. And you can see it added the phase features for it, all the holes and all the pockets and the whole groups and the counterboard holes and all that stuff that were already programmed from that part. Okay. I can jump over here to my CamWorks operation tree. Notice I have all the operations here because I've imported them from my previously programmed part file. I'll go ahead and edit the definition of mill part setup. We want to do this by part setup origin so we can have two different origins, two different work coordinates. Let's go here to the offset tab. I want to set this to part order. Work coordinates, I'm going to start with G54 and increment it by one. Hit the sign button so that this first setup is G54. The next one is G55. Go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and sort these operations by right-clicking on the machine and going to Sort Operations, Sort, by Operation Type, and I want to do Face Mill first, then all my drilling, then milling, and I'm going to do By Tool, by, then by Size. So it's going to do the largest tools first, where I hit and hit Apply, and that just sorted my operation tree for me. Go ahead and hit OK. Go ahead and generate Tool Path. Okay, so now I have toolpath for everything. You can see I can quickly scroll through this, and this is my toolpath and parameters that I had imported. Okay, one quick thing I'm going to do here, since I'm in assembly mode, is I want to identify the fixtures in here so that I can see them when I simulate the toolpath. So. You can pick them right out here live on the screen, or you can come over here to the Feature Manager tree in SolidWorks and pick them, which is what I'm going to do because it's easier to pick the assemblies here, the sub-assemblies, and grab all the components. So I'll go ahead and grab that and that. I'm going to expand my fixtures because I put them all in a folder and grab all those guys. So this just identified all the fixtures for CamWorks. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and come back over to the Operations tree. Now when I go ahead and simulate toolpath, I see my stock shape, my part files, and all my fixtures in here. So you can see, you know, I got my clamps holding my vise, my part stop over here. Um, you can see my Mighty Byte clamps with the Mighty Byte um, part stop over here in the first vise. Okay. You can see all those there. I'm going to go ahead and simulate this. I have it set to pause if there's any collisions, and there were none. So that went pretty fast. Um, 
we're doing here to save time on the video here. You can see that one ahead and simulate it OK. We're going to go ahead and OK that. And then we're going to go ahead and post-process this. We're going to run it also in the machine simulator. So I'm going to post-process and run the machine simulation. I'm going to overwrite that existing file. And it's going to post-process and automatically open up the machine simulator for me. That way we can verify the posted code. And again, just to point out, the virtual machine is what we're just going to open up here in machine simulation. That is an additional um, add-in that can be purchased for CamWorks only. Okay, so we can see the machine here. You can see my G-code program. I can go ahead and zoom in. You can rotate and see that around there and see the machine. You can see my parts and vices are there in the machine. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. It's going to load the tools up and it's going to go ahead and simulate these by simulating the G code. Go ahead and speed this up a little bit. So you can see it's roughing out part one there on the perimeter. Switch the tools. It's going to finish that. It's going to jump over in face mill and do all the center drills on that. And this, again, this is doing it in this sequence because I told the machine the output by part. So it does part one complete, then the next part. If I'd have done by tool, it would have minimized the tool changes and done only give the face milling on both parts first. And then went on to the next tool. Milling in the little pockets here. Zoom in a little bit more so you can see that. Doesn't take too long here to simulate, but a little bit of time. This is the volume mill tool path for tune of axis milling, which is included with CamWorks bundles and the SolidWorks Cam Professional. for the high-speed roughing techniques. It's doing some coil type milling in that. That's what it's doing. And then the counter bores, and then finish milling around all the islands. And I just chamfered them, and that part is then complete. So there's that. So again, as a quick tip, remember the active CAM configuration in which the part file is saved in as will be the CAM data that's inserted into the assembly mode. Um, solvers CAM users need the professional bundle, and that is done by, again, right-clicking on the part file in the assembly and say import data.